Jurassic Park 3 introduced audiences to the Spinosaurus, a massive sailback dinosaur that wasn't really talked about too much until its debut in the popular blockbuster film series. However, it wouldn't be the only animal to get its introduction to the canon from that movie. Dinosaurs like Ceratosaurus, Corythosaurus, and even the Ankylosaurus also made their first appearances in that film which interestingly has quite a cryptic piece of lore attached to it from some of the secret outside media associated with the films. Today, I'm going to be talking about these dinosaurs and their involvement in something called the Amalgam Testing, an illegal Jurassic Park experiment that to this very day, we don't actually have that much information on. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to go into detail talking about the Spinosaurus, its involvement in JP3, as well as what it was even doing on the island. For those of you who don't know, Jurassic Park 3 had a famously troubled production, which many believe to be what caused a lot of its ideas to feel somewhat rushed or less polished than some of the other entries in the series. A notable example of this includes the naming of Engine's List and the fact that Spinosaurus was for some reason not on it, as well as some rather fun concept drawings of the Spino's incubation box being cryptically put away and never seen in the final film. Now, when it comes to what Engine was doing here, we actually have a pretty good idea, but in relation to the illegal experiments that took place on these dinosaurs after their creation, well, that's where things get kind of weird, which we'll discuss in just a moment. But before we go any further, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, which you just might have heard of before. Raid Shadow Legends. Stop right there and be witness to the game that's completely taken over the mobile gaming space. Need something exciting and filled with dinosaur looking dragons to play? Well, how about downloading raids so that you can take down Demon Lord? Crush the Ice Golem, ascend the Doom Tower, and fight against millions of real players in the arena. There's literally millions of champion combinations and loads of tactics for you to master as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, PvP arena matches, and campaign battles. Hundreds of artifacts are waiting for you to equip them, and 500 champions are also on standby with unique skills for you to build your team, develop those champions, and raid away. If any of that sounds interesting to you, be sure to use my special links in the description down below to download the game to your mobile phone or PC. Now, what I really like about the game is the ability to equip certain sets to your champion when going up against really formidable enemies, like this massive dragon that I mentioned earlier. Choosing the tactics you'll use to progress in the game is pretty cool and a fun way to test out what works best for your own set of characters. But apart from that, what's new in Raid? Well, this month they've got a non-stop schedule for summer events and activities, special fusion events for new legendary champions, tournaments against other players, and even more. You also get five amazing new champions, all of which look awesome and are parts of the game I can't wait to try out for myself. New updates are going to be coming soon, and with Raid's plans for the summer just getting started, there's never really been a better time to hop on board. And if you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description down below, or scan my QR code and you'll get an epic hero Janoru, who's amazing in the Doom Tower, 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here, and once you're there, you can find me in game under player 92197299, and if you're fast enough, you can join my clan. Raid is kind of the game that people have watched grow into one of the most massive online mobile games out there, which means it's more than just your average game, so it's definitely something worth checking out, but like I said earlier, just be sure to click my link in the description down below. When you do, see you in game. So when it comes to the amalgam testing in Jurassic Park 3, viral marketing for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom describes the event as the following. During Engine's return to Site B, new species were grown in secret on Isla Sorna. These species were experimented on over a period of nine months starting just 100 days after the company was bought by Masrani Global. Incubation was achieved covertly and quickly to evade attention. Only a select few Engine members were involved and their names have been removed from records. It is unclear whether Mizrani Global CEO, the late Simon Mizrani, was aware of the violation of law. The research and growth of these animals were filed under, quote, early R&D for Jurassic Park's second incarnation, and simultaneously, the amalgam testing. The new species included Ankylosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Corythosaurus, and Spinosaurus. All were abandoned on Site B until the surviving animals were reportedly moved to Nublar to be housed as future attractions 
at Jurassic World. Now, there hasn't ever really been any sort of confirmation as to what the amalgam testing actually consisted of, but with this bit of information, we can confirm that the Spinosaurus, alongside other species, were experimented on for nine months after their illegal cloning had taken place in 1999. Now, previous Jurassic World material has suggested that Dr. Henry Wu abandoned some kind of, quote, gene splicing accident on Isla Sorna, which has always boiled down to being either the Spinosaurus itself or possibly the JP3 variants of Velociraptor, the latter of which may actually make more sense seeing as how Dr. Wu has even gone on record to call the Scorpius Rex the quote, first hybrid in newer episodes of Camp Cretaceous. And the memo featuring the gene splicing quote comes complete with Wu stating that he was trying to create feathers. However, I personally don't think things are quite that black and white. This could mean that the Spinosaurus and the other dinosaurs that first appeared in Jurassic Park 3 were simply normal engine assets that wouldn't have anything going on for them out of the ordinary, except for one thing. And that would, of course, be this amalgam testing. So, by definition, the word amalgam can be translated to meaning a mixture or blend which is what led me and several other fans to believe that this could be why the Spinosaurus, in theory of course, could be seen as something of a hybrid. However, no concrete description of what that testing really was has ever come out. Since Dr. Wu and the others were working on something they deemed would be perfect for Jurassic Park's second iteration, Jurassic World, it would presumably be something that would lead to higher ticket sales at Engine's theme parks, similarly to what went down in Jurassic World with the Indominus Rex. We know that eventually the company began splicing other dinosaur species into one another, but this far back in the timeline, we haven't really seen much of it just yet. Since no no legitimate answer to what the amalgam testing was has ever come out, this has become something of an unsolved mystery within the Jurassic Park lore. When the writers explained that the Spinosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and others were experimented on for nine months, what does that mean? How were these animal tests being conducted, and what was Dr. Wu trying to do after the fall of Ludlow's mission to open up Jurassic Park San Diego? These experiments were so secret that not even Simon Mizrani is believed to have had knowledge of them being conducted at all, and since only a limited number of animals happen to be experimented on, the whole thing seems to be something of a pretty elaborate scheme and cover-up by the company. What would you need to do to freshly cloned assets for a second version of Jurassic Park? Why would you classify these nine-month experiments as the amalgam testing? And what happened to the dinosaurs once this work was completed? Since the Spinosaurus itself, and really none of the other dinosaurs from JP3, seem to look sickly or deprived of normal attention, it's hard to really pinpoint what this whole experiment actually was, but for it to have taken place over such a long stretch of time, there definitely is something here that's greater than anything we've heard of relating to the dinosaur sciences of Engine. full stop. Apart from the initial DNA extraction from Amber, of course. So, what can we expect from the amalgam testing in the future? Will it come up in Jurassic World Dominion? Or maybe even future seasons of Camp Cretaceous? Honestly, I don't know, and I'm not so sure we'll ever find out unless the writers decide to tell us sometime in the future. Keep in mind, Alan Grant's mentioning of the engine list wasn't followed up on until 2018, a full 17 years later during the viral marketing campaign for Fallen Kingdom. So this piece of Jurassic lore could go unattended to for quite some time. Knowing that Dr. Wu and secret members of Engine's board were present conducting illegal experiments on newly bred species of dinosaurs is one of the most intriguing pieces of information that we have for the backstory of Jurassic Park 3. And since there's only one Spinosaurus confirmed to live on that island, the temporary occupation of Sorna is something of a fascination for fans of the series in general. Whatever kind of mixture or blend that amalgam testing did to those species, we may never know. But even if that turns out being the case, it's still one hell of an awesome piece of canon. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it really means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.